think that the Mercedes could uh, do a better job. Today I'm going to show you the most common issues uh, of Mercedes-Benz E-Class from 2009 up to 2016, um, all together with the estimate how much it will cost you to fix them. Let's start with the engines. Uh, this model was equipped with a 2 liter diesel, 3 liter diesel, 1.8 liter gasoline, 3 liter gasoline, 3.5 liter gasoline, and the 5.5 liter gasoline V8. Top of the line was a 6.2 liter. The 2 liter diesel is a solid engine with no typical issues other than a few oil leaks that you can fix for uh, literally a few hundred dollars. 3 liter diesel is a little more complicated uh, with a few more issues, uh, namely fuel leaks from the fuel lines, timing chain. The timing chain really depends if the previous owner took care of the car and did the regular maintenance, especially with oil changes. The turbocharger is prone to leak oil as well. 1.8 gasoline engine is a very good engine. Uh, the only common issues would be the valve cover leak where the oil leaks, but you can fix it for about $300. 3 liter and 3.5 V6 gasoline uh, is prone to fail for a valve cover gasket, PCV valve, oil cooler and oil filter housing gasket all together can be fixed for about $500. AMG 6.2 V8 gasoline engine is a very solid engine unlike a previous version that was famous for head bolts and the coil plugs. Uh, this engine is very good, powerful, there's absolutely nothing to say about that one. to the transmissions. Uh, this model throughout the years came with the three different transmissions. The early 7-speed G20 transmissions uh, was prone to fail uh, on a lead frame. There's a uh, speed sensor integrated into the lead frame. If that one fails, the car will uh, suddenly go from a fifth gear to a second gear or a first gear. That kind of an issue will cost you anywhere between 800 to 1500 to fix. Five-speed transmission uh, is uh, is a good one. There's not known common issues. All together with a nine-speed transmission uh, that came up with the 2000. 2014 models. This car came with three types of suspension. First was the air suspension with the air struts, the compressor and the valves, which is quite a complicated system. That one is prone to fail on uh, pretty much all of those parts, uh, from uh, air struts uh, to the compressor and the valve body. That can be quite expensive. Uh, struts are going from about the 350 up to $800, compressor $1,500 to $2,000, valve body about $500. Uh, like I said, uh, not a cheap fun. Another type of the suspension was the electronic adaptive suspension, which is not prone to fail, but the most reliable suspension is just the regular suspension uh, with the shock absorbers and the coils. There's no problem there. Brakes uh, on these models are okay. The only problem can be with the vacuum pump that tends to leak. Estimate to fix it is, if you're gonna rebuild it, it's about $250. If you're gonna go for a new one, it's about five to $700. Uh, again, not a big deal. Now to the electrical issues. There's a quite a few electrical issues. First, I would start with the key and the ignition load mechanism in here. Sometimes it just doesn't really recognize the key. You have to twist it a few times uh, for ignition to pick up the key and then be able to start the car. Another one, um, all those models that I've seen with about the ventilated seat failed as soon as 50,000 kilometers, which I consider very low and I would list it under the most common issues as well. This um, command control, there's a little plastic rod inside tends to fail almost on every single one. So what will happen, you will still be able to push it, but uh, when you will scroll that, it won't move uh, on inf infotainment, it just won't do anything. Uh, there's a repair kit that you can buy for about $100. Uh, it's not even difficult to replace it. Or you can just go for a new unit, uh, which is anywhere between four to $500 directly from the Mercedes. And this car also had a problem with the door lock mechanisms. But they're not expensive, they're about $150 to replace plus a uh, few dollars for labor. Now let's go to the body issues. Uh, first one, I would start with a roof. It often doesn't want to fully close, will leave you stranded with the open gap right in here, uh, which is obviously not good because it's gonna leave the, uh, the way for the water and all the debris to go inside the cabin. That one is uh, anywhere from $700 to $1,000 to fix. And considering this car has only 94,000 kilometers, uh, there's a few that I would uh, think that the Mercedes could uh, do a better job. First would be this uh, uh, cover, 
that's supposed to close all the way but it just gets stuck uh, the mechanism is just not well built um, would probably kind of question the quality of uh, of the mechanism another thing is uh, I know it's kind of many of you will say well this is really not important at all but uh, again you're paying over a hundred thousand dollars and it's a Mercedes it's not a Honda it's not a Toyota it's not a Volkswagen Jetta this kind of a squeaking noise are present from all over the dash, especially when you're going or when the temperature changes from cold to hot. This car haven't been in an accident, but what I found out uh, is this misalignment of a trunk to the body. Uh, this is a very odd. And the last thing related to the body issues that I'm absolutely shocked would be the seats. Those are absolutely uncomfortable and uh, the leather keeps ripping from the bottom portion of the seat. I've seen it starts to rip as soon as 60,000 kilometers. That's something that's, that's absolutely unimaginable for, for, for Mercedes Benz. Um, that one is actually not something that can be repaired unless you're gonna re upholster the whole seat. Uh, that can run you from anywhere. You have to remove the seat, you have to take it to somebody to have it re upholstered. That can run you anywhere from $800 up to $1,500.